In the gospel, Jesus reminds us about what matters to God, the fact that what matters to God should be what matters to us. And he tells us clearly what doesn't matter to God through his parable of the rich man building larger barns to keep all of his stuff for himself. It made me think of a different sort of parable that I heard in a homily a long time ago when I was just a seminarian uh, in my early 20s about two fishermen off the coast of Mexico. One was a rich man on vacation and observing a young local boy who had a small little boat and just the basic gear. The rich man offered to give him some of his things just to help him out a little bit. And he asks, you know, the little boy's like, you know, why, what's this for? And he says, you know, this is so that you can, you know, catch a good amount of fish and have them in a, in a little carriage thing to store them. You can take them to market and you can sell them. And he said, well, why would I, why would I want to do that? He said, well, that way you'd be able to uh, make enough money and eventually get a, a larger boat. And he said, okay, what's the point of that? Well, then you can get a whole team of people with you and uh, make lots of, m lots of money selling fish all the time. Well, what's the point of that? You can get more boats and you can even start your own small little business and have a living. Well, why would I do that? I said, well, if you, if you did that well enough, you would make enough money and you could retire. And why would I do that? And he says, well, you'd be able to come out here whenever you want and you can fish all the time. And he holds up his fishing pole and he says, too late, I found a shortcut. I already figured out how to do that. You know, this is a way of sort of dismissing the value and importance of work and providing for your family, the good, good things that that can, can do. But it does remind us of the reality of sometimes we get swept into of the rat race of life. When we die and go to heaven, a lot of what we do is going to look pretty silly. Not just our games, where, where we sort of build card houses that collapse and fall down, or move little shaped pieces on a grid, playing chess or checkers, or sweating ourselves to saturation, saturation, chasing after a ball, and trying to get it into some kind of goal against others. Or even more crazy, being a spectator to these things, and allowing feelings of disgust or anger or even rage well up within us towards opposing athletes or even towards fans. Many of our fights with our loved ones, uh, we will be able to look back at sometimes, even after just a week or a month or a year, but especially in heaven, we will look back and think, why did we let ourselves get so worked up about that? Why did we fight so much? about something so small. From heaven, the world and all of our problems don't seem so big. It's because we begin to see them in their proper perspective. And this is what Jesus is trying to remind us all of today when he says to be rich in what matters to God. And so what is it that matters to God? We know that wealth and possessions do not matter to God because our life does not consist of possessions, Jesus says. If it isn't wealth, then perhaps what matters to God is what we do with what God has given us. If it isn't our popularity that matters to God, maybe it is how we carry it in this life. We know it isn't our list of accomplishments either, because as Mother Teresa says, God doesn't call me to be successful, but to be faithful. And so perhaps what matters to God is who we attribute our accomplishments to. It isn't our prestigious jobs or our roles in society that matter to God, but whether we use them for others or for ourselves. It isn't whether we have a perfect home that matters to God, but the love that is practiced within that home. It's not about the free time that we have, but how we spend that free time on ourselves or on those around us. I grew up uh, in a home that we would sometimes listen to uh, the local Christian radio station. Uh, 
I guess now they call it Star 88.3. But um, when I was younger, I forget what it was called. Anyways, we would listen to that. And so we had some Christian music in the home. And I remember this rather cheesy song by Ray Boltz titled Thank You, which um, the way it was written just like forces you to cry, you know, like those songs that do that, kind of like they're cheating or something. But um, it was a beautiful message. It talked about this man coming to heaven and various people coming up to him and saying, thank you. So that's the title of the song, Thank You. And they're describing about how this one thing was going on in their life in this situation, and because of what this person did, they, uh, their life was changed, and they're now in heaven because of what this man did. And so he's got a stream of people coming up and telling him, thank you. Now that, brothers and sisters, is being rich in what matters to God, spending our life in such a way that not only helps us to get to heaven, but helps others to get to heaven. And in order for us to do that, to be rich in what matters to God, we have to value what matters to God. And an important part of being able to value what matters to God, especially in a society that is saying again and again and again, screaming in our ears, value this, value that, value this, value that, all these things that really don't matter to God. What's important for us then is to make sure that we put the things of God before our eyes, before our mind, before our heart, again and again and again. We almost have to practice that work of valuing what matters to God. Just like um, a runner has to get out and run in order to be good at running. A weightlifter has to do the practice of lifting weights in order to build up those muscles. So do we, so do we as Christians have to practice that desire for the things that matter to God. And prayer is a very important part of that, as I spoke about a couple weeks ago and last week in my homilies, how essential um, prayer is. Here in church, uh, even the, the way this building is designed and constructed, oriented, forces us or, or helps us to put in perspective what matters to God. The things that are before our eyes are this altar, this crucifix, and this tabernacle. These help us to remember what matters to God and help us to allow that to inform our own hearts, to allow the structure of this building to become the structure of our own hearts so that we, along with the people in our lives around us, are oriented towards heaven. Let's ask God for the grace in this Mass to continually ever deepen our value of what matters to God and not the things of this world and give our lives to it again and again so that when we get to heaven we will not be embarrassed at the way we have spent our time and energy and attention but that we will be surrounded by many people who say to us thank you